I'm Professor David Ralph. I work in London at the University College. A lot of doctors would, would be peasant and, and uh, show empathy to the patients anyway, but there were a lot that didn't. The junior doctors will only emulate what the senior doctors are doing, so if you have some senior doctors which actually are quite compassionate to the patients, then hopefully that will rub off on the juniors. And the other thing I was very touched when I was in your OR or your colleagues OR, they were treating the patient as they should be. What I'm saying is that they didn't strain the patient and they were treating them, how I say it, uh, like the human beings, as the human beings. You know, when they are anesthesia, well, when they get a you know, general anesthesia or the, on the surgery table, we sometimes treat them like an object, but you were not. You were treating them as they should be. I, I, when did it start? To, uh, well, I mean, obviously when I was in training, then there's a high, you know, your chief, you know, you could hardly speak to your chief because, you know, he was so powerful. And, um, that sort of mentality has changed in the United Kingdom oh. in that, um, you know, we're a little bit more equal and, uh, I mean, I think we're taught as well to respect the patient mm -hmm. and uh, certainly the government is, is saying that patients have rights and oh. they can make complaints and they need to be treated and mm. etc. And I think that's, that's good. I mean, a lot of doctors would, would be uh, pleasant and, mm. and uh, show empathy to the patients anyway, but mm. there were a lot that didn't, but mm. those that didn't have been forced to do that. Mm. So, and of course, again, remember, it's training, so the junior doctors will only emulate what the senior ah, doctors are doing. So if you have some senior doctors which actually are quite compassionate to the patients, then hopefully that will rub off on the juniors. Mm. I mean, that's what I saw. Uh, you were exactly reproducing uh, what you are doing uh, with your colleagues. So like uh, Mr. Christopher and the other surgeons will be able to. And the other part I was able to feel was more like uh, my own personal point of view is that Australia, Germany and Saudi Arabia and many other uh, countries are affected and they are offsprings of the, your, your trainings. So they get trained in the UK to be a neurologist, go back to Australia. It's fantastic to have because as I said we have eight fellows, we have huge numbers of observers that come from all over the world. Mm. Uh, but the, I mean, the fellows are there to be trained, um, and we always make sure that we've got overseas fellows uh, because we don't need to train eight fellows every year mm. in the UK because there aren't so many posts for them. Uh, but we still have the work, and so we get fellows from the United States, Australia, mm. Europe, um, and it's nice because they then see a different way of, uh. of, of, of doing things. Mm. Uh, they go back to their country and it feels great when you see that your fellow is presenting some papers and they'll say, well, when I was in London, I was told <laughs> to do this. And then it makes it all worthwhile because yes. they appreciate mm. their time with us mm. and we appreciate them. What will be the future direction you want to go? Well, I mean, there's obviously, there's only so long that I can be um, uh, <laughs> taking things forwards and the most important thing uh, is leaving a legacy behind so that you can say that's what I've achieved uh, and the most important thing is that we have the biggest andrology unit in the world and we do have the biggest andrology unit in the world uh, and I've, I've talked about just the consultant surgeons and, and, and the junior doctors but of course remember attached to all of that we have three euro Andrologists, so andrologists, uh, urologists that do all of our embolizations and MRIs, etc. We have uh, the embryology staff that, that, that come with us, uh, psychosexual therapists, uh, and the pathologists. So it's not just the people in the, I mean, it's all those in the periphery as well. So it's a big unit, and I hope, uh, well, I'm sure it will, it will stay that way. Um, 
hey, a medicine changes, you know. Then you have to develop some new drugs and then put us out of business, I guess. But uh, <laughs> until that time, hopefully we can offer a service. Yeah.